Enumerated constants are good for a lot of things in computing. You can use them to represent a list of values, you can use them to represent just a collection of states, and possibly most importantly of all, they have a really funny sounding name when you say them out loud. Enum. It's really satisfying and I don't know why. Some people call them enums, but they it's short for enumerated constant and enumerated constant sounds a little bit weird, so uh, let's go with enum for now. So in Game Maker, you can define one by saying enum. Uh, let's give it a name. Days, in lowercase letters please, days of the week. Uh, is a is a common thing to use an enum for. We can define a um, we can define a list of them. Uh, Mond Monday, uh, Tuesday. Uh, what comes after Tuesday? God, I can never get the hang of Wednesdays. Let's make them capital. Uh, Thursdays. My typing is all over the place today. Um, Friday. Um, the objectively best day of the week, Saturday, and, uh, Sunday. Are there any more? I think that's all of them. I'm only counting seven there. So what would you do with these? Well, you can assign them to variables, for one. And, uh, you could do something like current day is going to equal, okay, that's a reserved word that you can't set a variable to. Uh, you could say today is going to equal days of the week dot, uh, what is today? Friday, in real time, this video will be going up on a Saturday, but the day that I'm recording this is a Friday. Uh, you could say tomorrow is going to equal days of the week dot um, Sunday, because anyone who's actually experienced a weekend knows that that's about how it works. You finally get to the you finally get to the end of the week, and all of a sudden it's Sunday evening again, and you don't know where the weekend went. You can do all the usual things that you can do with variables. You could say today equals tomorrow, which I'm sure is some kind of logical fallacy or another, but I'm not entirely sure what. But regardless, tomorrow uh, will have its have the value set to today, or I should say today will have its value set to tomorrow. And um, I guess when midnight takes over, um, today is going to become tomorrow. Time is time is a funny thing. I don't understand time. So you could use enums for a, a lot of things, and a big one that we're doing here is um, storing a value in a, in a dedicated state. GML is a dynamically typed language, so the variables today and tomorrow can have other things set to them. Uh, you could have today set to like pi or something, which doesn't make a whole ton of sense, but um, you're allowed to do it and GameMaker would, would let you. But some languages would uh, uh, with static types would make it so that uh, today and tomorrow could only have their values set to a day of the week. Uh, GML does not, but we'll work with what we have. As long as you as the programmer know that, you, uh, that you're that you intended to only store a value uh, represented by day of the week inside these variables, uh, we, you should be good. There shouldn't be any issues with that. It's also very common to use an enum for things like AI states, so... Um, if you have a series of AI states, you don't need to put a semicolon at the end of this, but I, I find myself doing it uh, more often than not just out of habit. It doesn't matter. Uh, GML plays it very uh, very freely, very fast and loose when it comes to semicolons. Uh, you could have a couple of AI states, so you could have idle is a common thing to have um, for a, um, an enemy, which is just wandering around looking for things to kill. Uh, there's maybe patrol when it, when it detects that you might be in the area and that you might want to... Um, it might want to like try and find you. Uh, there is pursuit and um, what would be another one? Maybe, maybe a attack or combat or something. And you could have um, you could set a variable equal to uh, to one of these different AI states. And you could uh, you could switch this variable. You could check this variable, see what it equals to uh, to carry out a certain action, to see how the enemy should behave. Uh, that's another common use for enums. So when you start drilling down to exactly what uh, this value is, uh, you will find that, that, that these are just numbers. Uh, they are just ordinary numbers. If I were to show debug, let's just show regular message show. <laughs> I almost started to type out show regular message. Show message today. Uh, we are going to see that this is going to be a number. I believe this is going to be a four if I can count. Okay, so that's a six. I never actually promised that I could count. Today is being set to, uh, to Sunday in this in line 13 over here. Uh, if it was just Friday, it would indeed be a 4. 
anyway, this is just a number. Um, if you watched my, uh, if you watched a video I made fairly recently on the different data types in Game Maker, uh, you might be wondering what kind of number, which sounds kind of stupid when you say it out loud, but uh, if you were to say um, type of today to get the uh, to get the actual data type, uh, you will see that it is a 64-bit integer. All right, that's fine. Uh, the other types of numbers, of course, being real numbers, uh, also known as 64-bit floating point, 32-bit uh, integers, which are used for a couple things, but not that many, and um, as we have here, 64-bit integers, which are... Uh, that's a pretty big number. You're allowed to store 64 bits of, uh, of value in there, which is in, in decimal and base 10. Uh, should be good for plus or minus about 9 quintillion or so, if I recall. That sounds like a made-up number. All right. So by default, um, the enumerated constants uh, will have their values set automatically in order, starting from zero. So by default, Monday will be equal to zero, Tuesday will be equal to one, Wednesday is two, Thursday is three, Friday is four, Saturday is five, and Sunday is six. If I were to print out a series of these in sequence, days of the week uh, dot Monday, uh, let's do Tuesday next. Um, we can do Wednesday after that. We're going to see that we're going to be getting 0, 1, and 2. 0, 1, and 2, indeed. Like many things in computers, these are indexed from 0. So the first element is index 0. Uh, this is more or less arbitrary. Oftentimes, when you're using enumerated constants, you don't actually care what the actual values are, as long as they're distinct. Uh, you just care that the day of the week fr of Friday is not equal to the day of the week Sunday, uh, so that you can have each day of the week have a discrete value and a distinct value, and that it won't ever overlap with any of the other values. Same thing down here when it comes to uh, things such as AI states or other things that you may want to um, to use enums for. You can, of course, uh, set these uh, yourself. Uh, we can set Monday equal to 10. We can set Tuesday equal to like 20. Uh, Wednesday can be 50. I don't know why I made Wednesday 50. And now if we were to print out uh, or show message in a message box the days of the week. We're going to be getting 10, 20, and 50. Okay, uh, so in the event that you do indeed need to set uh, the value of an enum yourself, you are all allowed to do that. If you're wondering what happens after this, um, Wednesday is going to be 50. Thursday, since I haven't actually given Thursday a value, is going to be 51. Friday, since I haven't given Friday a value either, is going to be 52. So it's going to count up in sequence. From, where, from wherever you left off. So that's 10, 20, 50, 51, 52. And um, Saturday and Sunday would continue onwards from there. You can also give these negative values, uh, which is somewhat interesting. So this is going to be negative 1, uh, 20, 50, and so on. I, uh, if I were to make this like negative 5, and then Let it count automatically from there. You would see that um, Tuesday is going to be negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Saturday is 0, Sunday is 1. And, um, and we'll be counting up from there. So negative 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And so on and so forth. You may wish to use an enum to represent an error code. Uh, so different types of errors that could arise in a game from a particular process. Um, and you may, for example, wish to have the errors... Uh, be a negative value in the enum and successes be a positive value something like maybe enum Enum error codes you could have something like uh, player dead uh, Could be an error which could be equal to like negative five. Uh, you could have no more coins and That could be equal to negative four and then maybe you could have like uh, success equals zero if you want or success equals one and you win the game equals two that's a comma that's not a two and you can use this for an error code uh, this would allow you to take advantage of the truth values of numbers which is another thing that I made a video on recently and you could then say um, I don't know let's say status equals error codes dot player dead dead, D-E-D. -E -D. Uh, you could say st the status of, for example, the game or of something else is going to equal player.dead, player, error codes.player.dead, and then 
an if statement if you want to play with the uh, with the, the truth values of the numbers if status else uh, we could um, show message hooray and then um, if if the uh, if this value is falsy, so if it's a negative, if it's an error code or something, you could say show message. Ah! I have the worst fake screams. All right, let's comment out these up here just so that we can, uh, just so that we don't have to sit through those pop-ups before anything happens. And indeed, we have a, we have a message box that's just screaming at us because uh, status is equal to error codes that player dead. Uh, error code that error codes that player dead is equal to negative five negative five is falsy so we don't uh, we don't go into this block in the if statement we instead go into the else and we uh, we scream and likewise if the status is equal to error codes dot you win the game then uh, status is going to be equal to true uh, to, uh, status is going to be equal to true uh, status is going to be equal to two two is truthy so we uh, we we get accepted in the in the if statement. Okay. So some things you can't do with the nooms that people try to do is, um, and I'm going to maximize this code window to make it a little bit more roomy, uh, is one floating point values, you are not allowed to have something like 0 0.5 as the, um, as the enum value. Oh, you are. It just won't actually be set equal to 0 0.5. Okay, that's arguably even worse because then you could, uh, then the game would still work, but it won't do what you think it does. Okay, um, game maker, you should you should consider having having the the compiler yell at you if you try to set an enum equal to a floating point value. Uh, strings, I see people trying to do this on occasion. Uh, set an enum value equal to a string, and in that case, the game is just not going to compile to begin with, because uh, as the error message says, enum assignment must be an integer constant. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Uh, so that, that does make it so that you can't actually directly get the name out of, out of an enum. Well, you couldn't get the name out of an enum regardless, but you also couldn't set an enum equal to its own name, which in some ways is inconvenient. Uh, this is a string, which is indeed a compile time constant. It would be kind of nice if this, um, if this was allowed. Kind of the reverse of the last thing I tried to do with the 0 0.5 value, but it is what it is. Um, with that said, compile time constants are a little bit... Uh, generous in their definition, you are allowed to say something like 5 times 2 as your enum value, and this will work because 5 times 2 can be evaluated to 10 at compile time. Uh, there is no reason at runtime when that would ever not be the case. So you see, indeed, uh, when you s show message Monday, uh, 5 times 2 is equal to 10, 11, 12, and so on for the other days of the week. And this is also, uh, this also would go for a macro. So if you had uh, macro for five, which is just named five. That's perfectly useless, but uh, we're allowed to use macros with this uh, because the game maker preprocessor should be smart enough to realize that five times two, uh, even if it's indirect in, a, in the form of a, a macro, is a, a compile time constant. And indeed, that's what we get here when, you try, when we try to do that little experiment. Uh, what you are not allowed to do is uh, use a variable instead of a compile time constant in an enum definition. So this is no longer a, um, this can no longer be eval evaluated at compile time. This can no longer be evaluated as soon as you run the game. Uh, this five may have a different value for all the game nodes when you, um, when the game is actually running. And you see when I run the game, we've got the exact same error as before. When I try to assign a string to the enum, uh, enum assignment must be an integer constant. So uh, enum values have to have a set value uh, when you build the game, otherwise they won't work. Otherwise, game maker will yell at you. Something that can be useful when you're um, when you're assigning values to enums is hexadecimal. Uh, so, and this is this is definitely a more advanced subject. But if you are a fan of doing things such as uh, using binary masks for things, which is something that I have been known to do on occasion, uh, maybe a little bit more than is helpful um, than is healthy for me. But I uh, I do like my binary masks. Uh, you can do something like this in an enum. And this would assign a, uh, a different power of two to each one of these days of the week. You will see when I run the game, we will have zero, uh, well, 
not zero, but we'll have one, two, four, eight, and so on, two, four, eight, 16, and, and uh, so on and so forth. These are powers of two in, uh, in hexadecimal. If you're doing things with binary, uh, if you use bitwise operations often, you may find it helpful to do something like this. It's just another option. I'm going to undo all of that because uh, I want to do one more thing with the nooms. And that is uh, going to require that they're just in order in, a, in an integer. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And that is if you want to associate these with a value. Let's say that you actually do need to get, um, for example, the names of the days of the week or something. And since these are numbers, since these are just integers counting up from 0, uh, it is fairly simple to put um, to create an array. Uh, we can say day names uh, is going to be an array. All right, this isn't going to be the best code, but I will say just uh, days of the week dot Monday. Shut up, phone is going to equal Monday. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the days of the week. Just give me a moment. I don't think you feel like seeing me type this out. A really big pile of snow just fell off the roof. One of the advantages of, uh, of recording videos during the winter is that you don't have to deal with people using their lawnmowers 24-7. Uh, one of the disadvantages of recording videos during the winter is that there is about 15 inches of snow outside and a large chunk of it just fell off the roof extremely loudly. All right, so there is an array in, in the game now uh, containing the different days of the week and this is going to map uh, the string containing the name of the day onto the index in the array, which corresponds to the uh, to the enum. Um, this is just a simple array lookup. It's not anything too complicated. If I were to just uh, if I were to just show message instead of the value of the enum directly, uh, if I were to use the enum to look up an index in the array, we will see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the string form, and this can be helpful for certain things. Uh, if you want to map a value onto an enum, uh, you could have more than one. You could have, um, you could like rate the days of the week. You could like give Monday a, like an F minus. You could give Tuesday an F plus. You could give Wednesday something else, um, so on and so forth. It doesn't have to be the name uh, or, an, or even a string or anything else that you, uh, that you do this with. That's just something to give you ideas of, uh, of what you might want to do. Okay, enums, fun stuff. I use these often. Um, I know a lot of people use these often. Uh, they're a little bit mysterious. They look funny. They're not, they look a little bit different from different kinds of game maker code that you might be used to writing if you've never seen them before. But they're really nothing to be afraid of. They can be extremely helpful. I remember when they were introduced in Game Maker Studio 1 and they were just one of the things that felt like, how did we survive before this in the, uh, in the days of Game Maker 8 and 7 and whatever. But that's it. I'm going to end this off. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all of the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post a couple of videos a week, uh, one of these tutorial tutorials and one let's make a tower defense game. I like to focus on the more arcane, obscure parts of Game Maker that you might not see as many tutorials about. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, be sure to subscribe. I probably won't put the entire like Game Maker project file for this in the video description. Instead, I'll probably just like put a, a gist or a paste bin or something uh, containing this snippet of code that you can mess around with. Uh, but regardless, there will be something down there. I hope you all found that interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Koyo, Posho, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.